invitation and say, may not suffer you to visit them. The king hath strictly charged the contrary. The king? Who's that? I mean, the Lord Protector. The Lord protect him from that kingly title. Hath he set bounds between their love and me? I am their mother! I'm bound by oath, and therefore, pardon me. Come, madam. You go straight to Westminster. There to be crowned Richard's royal queen. Despiteful tidings. Oh, unpleasing news. Be of good cheer. Mother! Mother, how fares your grace? Speak not to me, Elizabeth. Get thee gone. Death and destruction dogs thee at thy heels. Thy mother's name is ominous to children. If thou wilt outstrip death, go. Live with Richmond from the reach of hell, lest thou make me die of the thrall of Margaret's curse. Full of wise care is this your counsel, madam. Take all the swift advantage of the hours. You shall have letters to me from my son in your behalf to meet you on the way. Oh, a cursed womb! Bed of death! Come, madam, come. I in all haste was sent. And I with all unwillingness will go. And would to God that the golden crown were red-hot steel to sear me to the brains. When he that is my husband now came to me as I followed Henry's course. But when I say I looked on Richard's face, this was my wish. Be thou, quoth I, accursed. And when thou wetst, let sorrow haunt thy bed. And be thy wife, if any be so mad, more miserable by the life of thee than thou hast made me by my dear lord's death. Lo, ere I can repeat this curse again within so small a time, my, my woman's heart grossly grew captive to his honey words, and proved the subject of mine own soul's curse. For never yet one hour in his bed did I enjoy the golden dew of sleep. Besides, he hates me, and will no doubt shortly be rid of me. Poor heart, adieu, I pity thy complaining. No more than with my heart I mourn for yours. Go thou to Richmond, and good fortune find thee. Go thou to Richard, and good angels tend thee. Go thou to sanctuary, and good thoughts possess thee. I, to my grave, where peace and rest lie with me. Stay, yet look back with me unto the tower. Pity you ancient stones, those tender babes. Rude, ragged nurse use my babies well. So foolish sorrow. Bids your stones farewell. Stand all apart. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard III, King of England. Cousin of Buckingham. My gracious sovereign. Give me your hand. Thus high, by thy advice and thy assistance, is King Richard seated. But shall we wear these glories for a day? Or shall they last and we rejoice in them? Still live they and forever let them last. Ah, uh, Buckingham. Uh. Young Buckingham. A young Edward lives. Think now what I would speak. Say on, my loving lord. By Buckingham, I say I would be king. Why, so you are, my thrice-renowned lord. And my king, tis so, but Edward lives. True, noble prince. Cousin, thou was not one to be so dull. Shall I be plain? I wish the bastards dead. <laughs> what sayest thou now? Speak suddenly, be brief. Your grace may do your pleasure. Tut, tut, thou art all ice, thy kindness freezes. Say, have I thy consent that they shall die? Give me some, uh, some pause, some little breath, my lord. I, I will resolve you here and present. High reaching Buckingham grows circumspect. Ratcliffe. My lord. I know a discontented gentleman oh. whose humble means match not his haughty spirit. Gold were as good as 20 orators, and will no doubt tempt him to anything. His name is Tyrrell, go call him hither. The deep revolving witty Buckingham no more shall be the neighbor to my counsels. 
hath he so long held out with me untied, and stops he now for breath? Well, be it so. Ah, Lord Stanley, what's the news? Uh, no, my loving lord, the Bishop Ely has fled to Richmond. Gatesby? Rumour it abroad that Anne, my wife, is very grievous sick. I will take order of her, keeping close. Look how thou dreamst. I say again, give out that Anne, my queen, is sick and like to die. I must be married to my brother's daughter, or else my kingdom stands on brittle glass. Murder her brothers, then marry her. Uncertain way of gain. But I am in so far in blood that sin will pluck on sin. Tear falling pity dwells not in this eye. Ah, Tiro. And your most obedient subject. Dares thou resolve to kill a friend of mine? <laughs> Please you, I'd rather kill two enemies. Well, there thou hast it. Two deep enemies. Let me have open means to come to them, and soon I'll rid you from the fear. Oh, thou singest sweet music. Say it is done, and I will love thee, and prefer thee for it. I will dispatch it straight. Lord, I have considered in my mind the late request you did sound me. Well, let that Rasselius fled to Richmond. My lord, I claim the gift, my Dubai promise, the earldom of Perifer. I do remember me when Henry the Sixth did prophesy that Richmond should be king, when Richmond was a little peevish boy. <laughs> a king, perhaps, perhaps. My lord. How chance the prophets could not at that time have told me, I being by, that I should kill my him. My lord, your promise for the earldom. Richmond. A bard of Ireland told me once I should not live long after I saw rich. My lord! Aye, what's a clock? I am thus bold to put your grace in mind of what you promised Well, well, me. but what's a clock? Upon the stroke of ten. Well, let it strike. Why let it strike? Because that like a jack thou keeps the stroke betwixt thy begging and my meditation. I am not in the giving vein today. <laughs> May it please you to resolve me in my sense. Thou troubles me. I am not in the vein. And is it thus? Repays he my deep service with such contempt? Made I him king for this? Oh, let me think on Hastings and be gone to Brecknock while my fearful head is on. Come on. Come along this way.